Howdy, it's Kyle talking about temperature scales, specifically why the Fahrenheit scale is superior to the Celsius or centigrade scale. And yes, what I'm saying is the stupid system we use here in the US is better than the system that is used everywhere else on earth. And in this video, I'll go over the reasons why that is. And if you're from outside the US and you're not familiar with the Fahrenheit system, I'll leave a timestamp to teach you how it is. It's really easy. You'll learn it in less than 30 seconds, but here's a secret, you already know it. Every human already knows the Fahrenheit scale. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the differences between Fahrenheit and Celsius and just why the one we use here in the US is actually better. I wanna first state that I'm not trying to defend the imperial system. The metric system of measurements is by far better than imperial in every type of measurement except temperature. And I also wanna state that neither Fahrenheit nor Celsius is the preferred temperature scale in science. So what is used in science is the Kelvin scale. So that is the one that is used by NASA. So if everyone to think about what are the best measurements to use for any type of situation, think about the ones that an astronauts used for the Apollo program to get people on the moon, metric units, but Kelvin temperature. So even NASA, even top scientists don't use Celsius. In meteorology, we'll use Celsius as kind of this common type stuff. But if you're really doing some hardcore calculations, you're definitely using Kelvin. So why don't they use Celsius in the hard sciences if metric is so good? Well, think about it like this. Whether it's 40 degrees Fahrenheit Celsius, doesn't matter. So say it's 40 degrees and it drops down to 20. Is it twice as warm at 40 than it is at 20? A lot of folks will say if it's 50, it's twice as warm as 25, but it's not. Think about if it's 10 degrees, is it twice as warm as it is at five? What if it's three degrees? Is it three times as warm at one degree? So you don't have that type of mathematical use with either Fahrenheit or Celsius because there is no absolute zero. So Kelvin has that absolute zero. So 200 Kelvin is twice as warm as 100 Kelvin because it's twice as much heat. But with Fahrenheit and Celsius, because there's no absolute zero, there's no, it's not really as useful in a mathematical sense because you're not, again, dealing with an absolute zero. So in temperature, you have two major uses for it. It can either be used in science or for the common man. So in science, again, neither Fahrenheit nor Celsius is useful, but why I'm saying Fahrenheit is much better than Celsius overall is because for the other use, for the common man, Fahrenheit is in fact better. If you ever hear someone mention why Celsius is better than Fahrenheit, it's usually gonna be because of two different reasons. One, well, the Americans use Fahrenheit, so it must suck. If the rest of the world is using Celsius, well, that must be better. And the other reason is because zero and 100 on Celsius scale are based on real things in the real world. So zero degrees Celsius is the point at which water freezes, and 100 degrees Celsius is the point at which water boils. So it has you know, real things on a zero to 100. But those are very scientific things, water freezing, water boiling. And again, science isn't using Celsius in terms of hard calculations, they're using Kelvin. So the fact that zero and 100 in Celsius are based off of scientific things, well, that isn't really important. So if neither Celsius nor Fahrenheit are ideal for science, what makes Fahrenheit better for Celsius and the other uses? Well, the other uses are gonna be more common man type stuff. You run into somebody on the street, the first thing you talk about is gonna be the weather. It's nice outside or, or whatever it is. So the Fahrenheit scale might not be based on anything specific, but that zero degrees to 100 degrees in Fahrenheit is about the general range of human preference in terms of temperature you can get on the planet. So right around in this part of the video is where I'm gonna have the timestamp to where if you don't think you know the Fahrenheit scale, I'm gonna teach you very quickly that you do. So again, zero to 100, do you think about that range of temperatures with zero being very cold, 100 being very hot. 50 being right in the middle is not gonna be either hot nor cold, it's gonna be pretty mild. If it's 75 degrees, it's more warm than cold. If it's 25 degrees, it's more cold than warm. So you think about it, zero to 100, and when it, when it gets below zero, it's really cold, and above 100, it's really hot. So if somebody, if you see something on an American television show and it says temperature is 36, you know it's gonna be pretty cold because zero to 100, 36 is below average. If it's saying it's 78, it's gonna be pretty warm. 98, really hot. So you already know the Fahrenheit scale because it's based on that zero to 100, the general range of human preference, what we like on Earth, because once it gets over 100 or below zero in Fahrenheit, it gets uh, pretty uncomfortable for most people. So again, it's a very simple scale and all kinds of calculations and you can look at all stuff like this and all kinds of mathematical things and 1.8 plus 32 and five ninths and all kinds, who cares? It's a very simple scale, zero to 100. So you know 50's mild and then you know 100 again hot, zero cold. So if you are American, you only know Fahrenheit and you see a Celsius scale, 
the mathematical equation is times one, they take the Celsius temperature times 1.8 plus 32, but if you're like me, you can't do that in your head. So what I do is take the Celsius temperature times two, so you're overshooting a little bit, but then only add 30. It's not gonna be perfect, but you can do that in your head pretty easily to convert uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, but I mean, you don't really have to. So Fahrenheit is a better scale because Again, you don't know it, but you, you do know it because you know that, again, if I say it's 23 degrees Fahrenheit, you know it's cold. So you do know Fahrenheit. It's just a more useful scale for the common man. You think about Celsius, the range is weird. It can be minus 10. It's not really that cold. And it can be 50. And it's like you're, you're dying of, of heat stroke. So for science, Kelvin is better. For common man stuff, Fahrenheit's better. So it's just it's a more useful scale for what we use. I mean, we can just all we have to do is memorize 32 degrees is is freezing point of water so that's 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 important for you know frost forming or um you know roads getting icier but i mean you don't need to have a scale based on water freezing and boiling for a common man type thing we want temperature range of humans so again kelvin's better for science fahrenheit's better for common man stuff when a celsius better i don't know guys if you can give me a single instance where celsius is actually better than fahrenheit other than like cultural things where more people know celsius but again in science we use kelvin fahrenheit just makes more sense from a common man so let me know europeans asians why is celsius better it's not so that was my take on celsius versus fahrenheit and i know often you can get americans trying to defend the imperial system but there's no defending it guys the metric system is way better in every way except temperature I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerd. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. As always, thank you very much.